Hey guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So we're back with our tier list for patch 3.4c solo queue. So, uh, we haven't done one of these tier lists in quite a while, and since then quite a number of things have changed. Uh, we of course had the addition of Vex, we had a couple of patches of champion changes and item changes, uh, etc. So now we're gonna of course discuss and talk about uh, pretty much all of that, and there have been quite a few changes in the tier list um, overall, and, and pretty much all the roles, uh, probably except ADC, that, that had the least change. But here, we're going to jump straight into it with the top lane. So in top lane, I still believe that Gwen is the best. When you reach like 2 to 3 items, you become an absolute monster. But even now, after like, I think it's like 3 patches already, I still think most people don't play Gwen properly. I still think that she... Uh, it's played way too aggressively in the early game and she's really weak early, so I think that's an issue. So she does look a lot weaker than she really is, but I think most of you guys will know that when you reach like late game on Gwen, like she, you know, can 1v3, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So I think that most people will know that Gwen is really strong. Wukong was already one of the strongest, um, and now he did get a buff on his Q like two patches ago, so he's even better. Akali, this latest patch, patch just got buffed, even though she's already one of the strongest and she does have the Rift Maker. So now just because of how strong she is in general, I think that uh, in the top lane, uh, even though she doesn't have the best matchups, I still think that Akali is so strong of a champion in the current meta at the moment that she has to be um, somewhere up there in the S plus tier. Um, no two ways about it. Um, Gragas and Garen still there. Yone um, still there as well. In the in the Baron lane, definitely the matchups are not as good as in the mid lane. So really hard to get kills early and snowball. But Yone is a busted champion at the moment yet again. If you roam for like a team fight and get a couple of kills, you can snowball off of that. Or if not, you scale really really well as well. So even if you go even in lane, you're still fine. And he's just really OP. Now Jace, I actually moved up from the S tier because I felt that he was actually performing way better than I thought. You can go full lethality with Serpent's Fang and Agent Knight, that kind of thing. Or you can go for like a more fighter build like with Black Cleaver and Death's Dance or even a hybrid between the two. I've tested all of those and you know they're all good for different situations. I think that Jace is a really strong one of the reasons because like Renekton, he's one of the best blind pick champions in the top lane because he's good in almost all matchups. He has really few bad matchups and he can bully most matchups same as Renekton. Um, I actually moved Fiora and Camille down into the S tier because I honestly felt that it's not that they're bad but I think everybody in the S plus tier is better than them and I think that they are better, better than them by a significant margin so it's not that, that, that Fiora and Camille are bad it's just that I think the rest of them are better. Sion I moved up from the bottom of the S tier because I felt that Sion as a split pusher with Hallbreaker is a major problem. Many teams uh, even in higher elos don't know how to deal with split pushers and Sion is a champion that if you have Hallbreaker and you don't have anyone on the enemy team that can 1v1 you, you can li literally just ignore the enemy champion and just keep whacking their tower and you need to send 2 to 3 people to stop you and if they do that, your team can get an advantage at somewhere else on the map like pushing towers on the other side, side of the map, getting dragons or barons and if they ignore you, you're just going to be able to literally get inhibitors and end the game if no one stops you and this has happened to me many times so the only reason why I think Sion is good is because people just don't know how to deal with him at the moment it's really difficult to 1v1 him unless you're like a Vayne or a Fiora that has true damage. If not, not many champions can deal with Sion 1v1. So the rest of the S plus tier uh, pretty much remains the same. Same goes with honestly pretty much the rest of the tier list um, just remains the same. So not honestly too much to discuss here. Um, Olaf, um, they did try to make Baron lane Olaf uh, more viable. But honestly, I can't really say I think he's better in the jungle. But I think that... Jungle was a role that he fared way better in than the Baron lane and I, I think that he needs a little bit of buffs to make the Baron lane Olaf better because there are so many better champions than Olaf in the Baron lane at the moment. And yeah, so with all that out of the way, we can jump into the jungle. Okay, so for the jungle, same old same old. Lee Sin is still the best. If you're a good Lee Sin, um, because of how strong he is early game, you can be really oppressive, really dominant, get your lanes a hit, get yourself a hit, kill enemies, etc. So if you're a good Lee Sin, I think Lee Sin is pretty much always going to be the best jungle champion you can ever play. Simply because uh, if you're good, he can do just so much. And unless they nerf him to a point where he's actually bad, Lee Sin is pretty much always going to be one of the best junglers. Shivana, um, again, really fast power farming jungler, gets her um, ability evolutions really fast. 
and you farms really really quickly and you, you guys all know she's really strong wukong still up there as well again with the with the q healing buff two patches ago really really strong morgana i've actually moved all the way up to the to the S plus tier because I really felt that she's actually very strong. Now her main issue is how squishy she is and how it's really hard to um you know why 1v1 other junglers and all that but you really don't have to do that. Um you are the fastest clearing jungler in the game at the current moment so you can always clear more cams in the enemy jungle. You get more levels in them uh early and you can get to lanes faster early so basically at high elo morgana is an absolute monster because wherever the enemy jungler wherever you are the en enemy jungler is normally like one camp behind so if you gank uh the, even if the enemy jungler follows the same jungle clear as you you're always going to be ahead of them you provide so much utility with your root with your black shield and even area control with your w and when you get fed your w does a lot of damage and yeah basically morgana is just really strong i think that you know she moves all the way up kha'zix and gragas are still there now olaf this is a little bit contentious. I know he did get his jungle, uh, his attack speed nerfed on his passive, but I honestly still think Olaf is very strong in the jungle. I I've been destroyed by countless Olafs in the jungle. The simple fact of the matter is that Olaf as a champion counters champions that have only CC to peel for them, like champions like Lux and Varus that to keep people off of them, they have to use the binding or the uh, um, corruption, I forgot what it was called, but the Varus ultimate, the chain of corruption. Uh, these kind of champions are hard countered by Olaf and you can really do nothing much uh, when there's Olaf running straight at you. So Olaf I still think is really strong in the jungle now. Jarvan, Nunu and Vi are all ganking junglers and I think Jarvan is the best out of the three of them. Uh, pretty much they don't care too much about farm, they're more about ganking the early game, getting your lanes a hit and getting yourself a hit and then starting to snowball off of that. Pantheon a little bit similar as well um, to Vi, and, Vi, Jarvan and Nunu, they're all ganking and the reason why they're really good is that um, pretty much you have a lot of CC in the early game, you can get yourself and your lanes a hit and basically you can snowball off of that and that's pretty much how you win the game. Raven and Xin Zhao still there. Evelyn I moved from the bottom uh, of the A plus tier to the top because I think Evelyn is actually still pretty pretty good and one of the solid AP options in the jungle. Now Echo I've actually moved down to the middle of the A plus tier because of the continual jungle clear nerfs that he's been getting from, from like the past like 4 patches or so. He always gets the damage uh, uh, on jungle monsters reduced on his Q, on his passive, etc. So they're really trying to push him out of the jungle. Now the only reason why he's still so high is because he scales really well into late game. So even with a bad early clear, eventually you'll get to a point where your clear speed doesn't actually matter anymore and you're still going to be really really good. Now I've actually moved Diana up because I've actually realized that Diana, I used to think her clear speed was really slow but if you had optimized Diana's clear speed, she actually is a pretty fast clearer and she's actually, you know, pretty pretty good. Now what do I mean by optimizing her clear speed? So for example, from the red buff, you can actually Q the red buff and hit the crux at the same time and then jump over to the crux which saves you a lot of like walking time and uh, you're attacking two monsters with one ability at the same time. You can do the same thing with wolves. You can actually hit wolves and blue buff at the same time and then jump to the blue buff and that kind of thing. And you can do gromp and blue buff at the same time. So if you do her clear correctly, she's actually a really fast clearer and she you know far farms really quickly basically. So she can be really really strong and she's a really strong champion at the moment as well. Yone I've moved down because his clear isn't really all that good but he is still really strong as a champion in general so he has to be you know, somewhat high on the jungle tier list. Now conversely, honestly I think Gwen's clear speed is absolutely horrible but she's still you know somewhat, she's decent, she's in the A tier, A tier is like average so I think she's still decent because uh, she's really broken as a champion at the moment, so even though her clear speed is bad, she pretty much can't gank at all. So she pretty much just power farms the two items and only goes for like objectives. Uh, but when you get to the two items like your um, your Nasher's Tooth and your Rift Maker, you're gonna destroy everybody. So pretty much that's why she's still you know somewhat um, high in the tier list. She's still A tier. So Camille's jungle clear is absolutely horrible now, especially with the continual nerfs to her damage and the nerf to her E. Um, as well, the cooldown on the E is absolutely absurd, uh, where she used to move around the map pretty quickly, now she cannot do that anymore, so I think Jungle Camille is going to die out sooner rather than later, um, so yeah, there she goes. So the rest of the tier list pretty much remains the same, now we can talk about the mid lane. Okay, so mid lane, pretty contentious, but honestly I feel that there are so many broken champions in the mid lane at the moment, the S plus tier is huge, which I really don't like this, but when I really think about it, I really can't find people to move out of the S tier, so we're gonna go through them 
um, relatively quickly. So Akali, we all know, is absolutely broken. She got buffed. Rhythmaker is is insane on her. And if you're good at Akali, you can really like one v five, like with the shot ultimate and everything. I literally seen Akali's one v five, um, like literally. So I think Akali is really really strong. Yone is still really really strong. If you're a good Yone, you can pretty much go in, get kills, and get out without dying. And yeah, Vex. Uh, honestly, is completely busted. I don't know why her numbers are so insane, but I've seen matches where my Vex, or not my Vex, but a Vex is like four, uh, zero and four, zero deaths, four kills, and then she still one shots me. I, of course, I do play ADC, and I still get one shot by the Vex that has like only one item, uh, that kind of thing. I just get full combo and I just instantly die. Her damage is just absolutely nuts. So Vex is all the way up there. Cassidy uh, again. Really weak early game, but insane beast in the late game. Katarina, after uh, the latest, uh, not latest patch, but after a couple of patches ago where she did get the Rift Maker, I think she's now absolutely insane. Um, she's really, really strong at the moment. I think she's S plus tier for sure. I've lost so many matches where like my team is so ahead, but there's one Katarina kills us all and wins the game for her team. So Diana and Ari are still up there. Same with goals with Kara and Irelia. Corky is a new addition to the S plus tier because of all the huge buff she, he got on his E two patches ago. He now does insane uh, levels of damage. So he is definitely one of the best mid laners at the moment as well. So because of how fat the S plus tier is, I had to move a couple of people down uh, without having like basically 20 champions in the S plus tier. Uh, that's an exaggeration, but I had to move Gragas and Yasuo and Ziggs down because I think that Although they are really strong, I don't think that they're on the same level as the people in the S plus tier, so I'm gonna have to move them down a peg. And behind them, we have the usual suspects of Echo, Galio, Ori, Zed, and Akshan, who are also really strong. Vega, I've actually moved down from S to A plus tier, just because I feel that he really isn't as good as the S uh, tier champions at the moment. After he got his latest nerf, it, his, his power level fell off a lot, and... Um, now a lot of assassins are in the meta, like Yone, like Akali, and uh, we have also Vex who can easily kill him. We have, uh, again, just looking at like the S plus tier, we have Katarina. Cassidy can easily jump out of his cage, so the meta really isn't good for Vegar at the moment, so he's really not so good. We've actually moved Lux up from, I think it was the B tier, all the way up to A plus, because now Lux with the Redeem Enchant and um, just in general her, her like damage, not Redeem Enchant, what am I talking about, with the Protect Enchant, uh, absolutely insane, and it, she's even good in the mid lane just as a as a general pick. Easy one shots when you hit the binding and you're fed. Uh, pretty much you just throw all your spells at the enemy t at the at the enemy that you bind, and you pretty much just one shot them. You still have a lot of utility with your W as well, so pretty much just very very strong in general is Lux. Rest of the tier list remains the same, so now we're gonna move on to talking about ADCs. Okay, so for ADCs, not too many changes, but we got a couple. First up, I think Kai'Sa is currently the best ADC after playing Kai'Sa and Lucian a lot. Now, Kai'Sa, Lucian, and Zaya, by the way, are my three main ADCs uh, this current season. After testing both of them, I really think that Kai'Sa is the best ADC. I think she's better than Lucian if you're a good Kai'Sa player because Kai'Sa is really difficult to play. And as you guys saw, I made a lot of Kai'Sa videos recently. Number one, because she's really strong and I've been spamming her. And number two, because I think a lot of people need help learning Kai'Sa. Because Kai'Sa is a really difficult ADC to play. And especially with her build, and even just how to use her ultimate in general. I think she's just really difficult to execute. But when you're good at Kai'Sa, I really think she's very strong. The buff they gave to her Q two patches ago was so, so broken. Uh, closely behind is Lucian, who is still really strong. Uh, strong early game with the Kraken Slayer. And just a really strong champion in general. So, next up we have Zaya. I think one of the most underrated ADCs. Counters so many uh, mana champions like Akali and Katarina. I say counter to a certain extent because uh, she pretty much counters any champion that wants to jump in on her just based on the fact that they're going to eat all of her feathers and a huge root as well. So, uh, she doesn't literally hard counter them because they are still assassins and they can still kill her. But the fact that she, they have to jump in and take damage from her and the fact that she has her ultimate also to prevent her from taking damage from them I consider that pretty much countering them. And yeah, so Vayne and uh, Caitlyn are still there. Uh, Vayne, just because she's so mobile, she's a hyper carry that can carry you in the late game, but kind of weak early. Um, Caitlyn, really strong early, and if you have a, a strong front line, she's a really strong champion if you cannot, if an enemy, enemy team cannot get their hands on her. Now, Corky, again, uh, they've buffed him to the moon, so Mage, 
uh, AD, Mage played in the ADC role, pretty much dead. Corky is pretty much um, going to be the go-to AP source if your team has no AP. And yeah, so until now, uh, Ezreal, Tristana still really good. Draven as well. Samira I moved down from the S plus tier because that nerf that I thought was, didn't, wasn't going to do much to her. Turns out it hurt her damage a lot more than I thought. And the movement speed on her passive as well from two patches ago, I think hurt her a lot more than what I expected. So Samira is no longer like... Um, completely broken in my opinion. Now, because I think Varus and Jinx are good, but not on the same level as like the S tier and not as bad as the A tier champions, I've actually moved them down to the A plus tier and I moved down the previous A plus tier champions to the A tier. So, Varus did get buffed like two patches ago, but I still think he's he's alright, he's alright. A, A plus is still very good. Same goes with Jinx. They, the two of them are not too bad, but they're at the same time just not as good as the S plus and the S tier champions. Now, Ash, Jin, and MF are just basically bottom of the barrel. A tier still average, still viable as ADCs, but uh, you have so many better options, but they are still viable, of course. And Fasting, uh, Senna, of course, really, really good as well. I know I put her like at the bottom here, but uh, that's because this is for solo queue, so I don't really put Fasting Senna too high. Really hard to find someone who can cooperate with you, but if you play it with like Duo, she's going to be way higher. So now we're finally going to talk about supports. Finally, last one is supports. Now supports, you can see I distributed them a lot more evenly than a lot of other um, of a lot of other roles. So now we're going to discuss really quickly S plus tier, Karma still absolutely broken, Nami with Imperial Mandate absolutely broken, and Lulu surprisingly even though she got nerfed like a couple patches ago, I face a lot of Lulus and I still think that she does the job way too well of just Basically, making some other champion like one, one and a half times of a champion. Uh, she's just so good at making uh, someone like, you know, so hard to kill and so strong. Like, especially like an ADC or like if you have like a fat Olaf, a fat Irelia, you know, so on and so forth. Like, having a Lulu on the team is so annoying to deal with. And yeah, that's pretty much all I can say. Now, Nautilus, after so many buffs, I really think Nautilus is pretty much the best engaged support at the moment. The CC, uh... Uh, onto like a single target is absolutely insane. You get hooked by Nautilus, you are not moving for days, basically. Now Lux is kind of the opposite, a lot of utility with her shield and the protect and enchant. At the same time, AP Lux one-shot potential insane, especially considering you're playing a support. Um, and yes, yeah, absolutely insane. Now Rakan, probably the second best engage tank, uh, engager uh, in uh, the support role aside from Nautilus. Although I think Rakan's engage are way, is way easier to hit than Nautilus. And you have a lot of potential for 5-man engages. So I still think he's really, really up there. Now Senna is really, really strong. Just got buffed her damage in 2 patches ago. And also it's solo queue. So if you can't rely on your ADC, Senna is really great. But of course you do need a solid frontline with Senna. And if your team has no tank, picking Senna is a really, really bad idea. Now Pike, another carry support, uh, of course really good in solo queue. And I've actually been spamming a lot of Pike, and honestly, I think that if you're good, Pike is really, really, uh, really, really broken. Honestly, if you're good at Pike, because he's so slippery with his W and with his E. Uh, even when you're deep in enemy territories, you can escape a lot of the time with like one HP, and you can regen your your health with your passive, and and then you can just go back into the fight again. And simply because um, he has that hook mechanic. Uh, you can find so many free catches um, with his hook, and it, he, he can really decide a match. Like, a good pike hooks, like, so many people, gets so many picks, executes so many people, gets his whole team ahead, roams top, roams mid, everything. Uh, pike is really broken if you're good. Now, Thresh. Uh, honestly, I think Thresh's power level has remained relatively the same, just that everyone else got stronger, so I think he's really not as strong as the S tier champions at the moment, so I'm going to put him in the A plus tier, but if you're a good Thresh, he can definitely still work. Now, Janna, Soraka, and Morgana, I feel like are three very underrated enchanters that are actually really, really strong. Um, Janna, really strong counterpick into uh, engaged champions. Soraka, of course, the healing is absolutely insane, really annoying to deal with, and I think Soraka, I can see her moving further up the tier list in future patches, and Morgana, a lot of utility combined with, um, in the support where you generally don't build a lot of damage, you'd like to build like Rylice and stuff, but if you want to, you can build damage, so you could, you know, go for the carry build if you're really in solo queue and you can't rely on your teammates. Now, the rest of the support tier list, remains generally the same but someone i want to highlight is yumi yumi just got buffed uh in the latest patch for healing but i think the buff is so minimal that i don't think it's going to help her all that much and i think she is still pretty um 
garbage, <laughs> honestly, because there's so many enchanters that can do her job better. Uh, and yeah, so pretty much that's it for the tier list. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and goodbyes.